pick off the mic, guys. They can hear us now. You sure that mic is off? I think that mic is off. I hope it's off. I think they can they can hear the, the mumblings and the rumblings. Oh, oh, that's my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you hear my voice, child? It is the voice of an of a past age. A voice you are not meant to hear. Okay, I'm freaked out. <laughs> All right. Hey, look at us. Look at us. We are here. We are here on the Rock Gut stream. Hey, everybody, look who's back. It's you and it's me. It's him. Yeah, put He's... your hands together for me, everybody. All three of you. Yay. <laughs> wow, I don't feel the love. Come on, more. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's see. We already got wheels in the chat. We got Arthur Lopez. It is going well. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, John Gunsel, our man, John Gunsel. Good to good to see you. Wheels, who of course you know, you met him down in Texas. Texas. Mm -hmm. As you also met John. Yep. And uh, yeah, so that's who's in the chat right now. Good to see all of you. What's everybody drinking? Or um, eating? I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jeff, why aren't you having dinner with your family? <laughs> Because they want to hang out with us. Beautiful. We're, we're we love lovely. That. Yeah. We're lovely. Or maybe maybe this is the this is what they do with their families. Maybe they like maybe maybe their families are rock cut. Oh, that could be. Yeah. 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 Hey, family. Come we out. love we love alcoholic babies on this show. <laughs> Just dozens of tiny tiny stumbling drunks. Oh, it reminds me of Sheboygan weddings. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> That's how you're raised. You're in this kid. Yeah. Just enough so that the adults that you're knocked out by ten oh, o'clock. Yeah. So yeah, you were, you were just kind of mellow and chill, and yeah, you didn't bother anybody. It was great. Um, John's on the diet sprite, so I mean that is fair. Um, Arthur Lopez, ooh, early times bottled and bond. We need to get that on the show. Actually, I don't think we've done an episode of that. Um, and Jason Busey just hopped in the chat. Um, he is doing some kill home and. Yeah. Three thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> if we if we get through all this, I may just pour some Kilhoman afterwards. Oh yeah. Wonderful stuff. It really is. Yeah. It really, really is. Um, but yeah, so as to the topic of this live stream. Whiskey. Whiskey. Okay. As always. As always. But um a very particular brand of whiskey. This is Grange Stone. Ah, right. Now a lot of our uh, oh, Jason's on the Machiar Bay. Nice. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and then, oh, Anthony. Oh, man, I'm going to mess this up. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It's a Greek name. What's this called, Tony? Mac, Macron, Macroniotis. Macroniotis? I'll go with that. That sounds right. <laughs> um, he is on the Kentucky Owl Rye Batch 3, which is also good stuff. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, what is that running? I think it's running 110 by us. Why is everybody drinking better than we are? Because <laughs> this is the Rocket Review. They tune in. They tune in to see us drink crap. Yeah, well, this might not be crap. It might not be. Yeah. No. Um, but yes, Grange Stone. Grange Stone. So what the hell is a Grange Stone? I was going to ask you. Yeah. That. Well, actually, okay, so... There's actually so Grange Grange is like a granary, right? Okay. So these are actually Scotch, but in Ireland there's a uh, standing stone circle called the uh, the Lesna Granchi, which mean it literally means the fort of the granary. Ah. So a Grange stone, right, would be would, would be yeah would be, be like the wall that protects the, the grain, or yeah. maybe maybe it's a millstone. I don't know. I don't know. But this is this is an independent bottling. It's owned by William Grant and Sons, the same people who do the Balvenny and the uh, Glenfiddich. Oh, okay. Single malt whiskeys. Um, Only they did something different they did here, something which different. we're going to experiment so, with. Yeah. So now they have um, they have the uh, Caninvi Distillery. Just it's right next door to Balvenny, over in uh, Keith. In Northern Scotland, of course, everybody knows. Everybody that. knows that. Everybody, well, everybody but me on why this would, channel. Why would I even have to tell <laughs> I'm you? I'm here that. to learn this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the dumb one. It's great. Um, I'm oh, here for the liquor. Anthony says I got his last name right. <laughs> I, I'm pleasantly surprised by that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, drinking all afternoon, you get something. Yeah, right. right. 
yeah, we were shooting some worse whiskey watch videos before we we hopped on stream tonight. So unfortunately, yeah, yeah. right. Um, but okay, so Grangestone, Grangestone. So Caninvi is probably where Grangestone is coming from. They don't actually tell us. They, and actually, William Grant and Son's name is nowhere on this bottle, which is always a good sign. Um, they actually, so the Grainstone here in the States, you can own, I don't know if all the states, but at least here in Wisconsin, you can only buy it at Total Wine. Okay. It's like they're, it's like they're, it's not a house brand. A little niche market. Yeah. It's not a house brand technically, but it's only distributed in you, Total you Wine. You buy four little ones and you get a big one for yeah, free. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's relatively cheap single malt. Um, and it's, they're pretty sure it's Canimbi. And that, so Canimbi is funny because it's a single malt distillery that doesn't have its own mash tons. Just to say it, it's funny. Canimbi. 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 Um, but yeah, it doesn't okay, have no its, mash tons. No mash tons. Okay. So all of the mashing is done at Balveni. And then they have to pipe yeah. the mash over to, to ferment it at Canimbi. Okay. Yeah. How, how, how far is that? Not that far. It's like right across the road. Oh, like this far? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not this it's far. It's like right that on far. top of it. Okay. So it's short. Yeah. Pipe. Yeah. It's a so, short lead pipe. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so so this is basically kind of like the budget brand for William Grant and Sons. Like it's not, so they, Canimbi is the same stuff they put in a Clan oh, McGregor. Okay, so they flush this from one side of the street, street to, to, to the, the other. other. <laughs> to the other, yes, that's that's literally what they're doing. That's literally what they're doing. Nice. And then they're distilling it on the second okay. side. Okay. Yeah. But Canimbi is the same stuff that goes into Clan McGregor, which I mm. don't think we've had on a worst whiskey watch, but we should. Mm. That was my, like, that was my college, my college <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Uh, scotch. It's um but this is like a step up so crime mcgregor is like their william and grandson's low-end plastic bottle bullshit doo, doo. Yeah. yeah and then grangestone is like their step up mm -hmm. now you're getting into nice blend blended malts and single malts real bottles or yeah caps. real real glass <laughs> um and then you get up into their their name stuff your glenfiddich and your balvenny mm -hmm. yeah class with cork exactly class with class. exactly nice um Jason uses this very small pipe for varying definitions of small. We know all about small pipes. Oh, you want to show. see small. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But yes, so we've got four expressions from Grangestone. We're going to start with their bourbon cask finish. Mm -hmm. Why does that sound funny, though? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, so basically they say matured and specially selected white oak casks and finished in finest bourbon oak casks. Marketing hype. Yeah. Yeah. So they took refill, old ass refill barrels, you know, aged this for a little while, and then and then put them in some decent bourbon barrels. They don't even say it was if it was first fill bourbon. So it might not be. Let's let's get into this. Yeah. Age. Non age statement. Non age statement. Non age okay. statement. Minimum three. Okay. Minimum three because it's scotch. But otherwise, they they don't tell us. Uh, Anthony says they also have Grangestone at Total Wine there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's. I'm pretty sure it's the Total Wine thing. It's only distributed to Total Wines. Yeah. And they should change their name. Total Wine and Grangestone. <laughs> Grangestone. <laughs> they do try to push it. They love to push their like house brands, which okay. this isn't technically a house brand, but it kind of is. They love pushing their like their shield egg and their um, I don't remember what else. All the stuff they get in that's just for their spirits direct program. Oh, oh yeah, okay. They they will push that down your throat because Total Wine is terrible. Erica told me not to badmouth Total Wine <laughs> when I was on the video today. Because? Because she says maybe someday I'm going to have to work for them. Oh, well, yeah. Hey, but, uh, Total Wine, we love you. Yeah, we love you, Total Wine. You're so <laughs> great. All of your, all of your, uh, all the people who work there are so knowledgeable. And you, uh, you definitely don't sell crappy uh, underage products in your, in your house brands. I know just a small bit of cynicism. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, are you having trouble well, speaking? Yeah, right. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, Total Wine, in some areas of the country, it's all you get. You can only go to a Total Wine. You may not have, like, a yeah. local, local liquor okay. store. So, you it's know, like we shouldn't be Walmart too mad at them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. 
exactly. All right, what do we and think? You're damn glad you have that. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, but what do you think of this bourbon finish? I'm not thinking much of it. <laughs> yeah. It smell it smells like it smells like your very standard Speyside kind of malt. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of honey sweet, little bit of maltiness. Yeah. But not no. See now, when I first smelled this, I thought it was bourbon. I was like, <laughs> "Oh, this is bad!" And then I figured out it's not. No, it's, it's not just bourbon gas. Yeah, so, hey, it's like different for those of you who are playing along at home. Yeah. yeah. How you doing, Ben? Um, yeah, you do get that malty. Like it's that kind of. It's sweet, but it's not super sweet. It's that slightly astringent malt mm -hmm. smell. You know the the off sweet maltiness that you get with a lot of scotches. Uh, but yeah, there's not a whole lot to speak of there. Honey and apple. It reminds me a lot of like a uh, underaged Belvenny. Mm, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just without the, the sparkle that makes Belvenny. It's Belvenny. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> unique self. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to get a taste. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hang him back. <laughs> Watch him just... Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, that's better than I thought. Yeah. yeah, it's not terrible. No, this is actually better than I thought. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey Ben, what are you drinking tonight? Um... Also, Arthur and Ben were just on my Whiskey Den's uh, 100 subscriber like stream. So good to see you guys there. Go cool. subscribe to my Whiskey Den if you haven't already. Right. And to us, too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Leave a like, comment, make us feel good about ourselves, please. Uh, I only do this for the, the whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Accolades <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he needs the accolades. Yeah, right. I feel very bad about myself. I <laughs> I only base my self worth on the comment of strangers on the internet. Right. Yeah. And he measures so. himself as a man by his height. <laughs> 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 only because he's six. Yeah. Right. Six. <laughs> right. Yeah. I weighed the scale on that one. Hey, Whiskey Crusader Will, how you doing, buddy? Good to see ya. Uh, oh, Ben's got allergies. That's too bad. Um. Oh, Jason Busey hit the bell so he can see all our updates whenever we're on. Cool. That's nice of you, Jason. Thank you. Um. Yeah. All right. So the taste. So the taste. It's kind of dark honey. Mm -hmm. Dark honey. Little bit of orchard fruit. It's not. It's not bad. So it, it's a little effervescence on the mm -hmm. tongue. Mm -hmm. I like that. Kind of just it floats and you know, it kind of yeah it's pillowy as the beer nerds yeah, say okay or, it, it kind of caresses your tongue I'm gonna go with prickly prick oh it's prickly <laughs> okay the opposite it's of pillowy. just it's just a little yeah and a little bitey there is a little bit of pepper there but it's yeah. it's it I don't know if that's pepper or if that's just alcohol heat that's only forty percent it's forty percent but it's it's probably pretty young oh yeah so like, like that's probably why we're tasting some some alcohol burn on there. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost moderately very okay. Yes. <laughs> it's one of those whiskeys that has like, like three notes, honey, caramel, apple, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 I think, because this runs for like, I think 20 bucks, 25 oh, okay. bucks for, for, a, for, a, for a, a real size one. Yeah, for a fifth. Like I think that's that's a fair amount for what oh, we're sure. what you're getting yep, here. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll yeah. Go with that. Like it's not awful. It's not really, like us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not like us. We're terrible. It's just it's just kind of there. Yeah. Yeah. But that is that is their kind of these okay, are bourbon cast. Bourbon cast. Okay. Now 
now. They've got three other flavors. Yeah, three other flavors. Yeah. We were thinking we were going to do the 12-year-old next because that's that doesn't have any weird finishes on it. Yeah, I'm expecting that one to be the best. You think so? I hope so. <laughs> well, let's find out because we've got – so we've got the 12-year-old Grangestone, the – what is this one? The Sherry? Uh, the Rum. The Rum. I'm hoping the Rum is just wonderfully yeah. delightful. But Yeah. Again, yeah. We'll, we'll hold all. Well, I'm expecting – the rum and the sherry to be more dramatically different from the bourbon because sure you're basically just aging this in used used white oak and then a different kind of used white oak sure you know like just just oh sure. pretty standard sweet vanilla -y stuff um you're not really changing it up too much but all right here's a question how much of this is how much of this is this just going to be the Belvenny 12 year old without a sherry finish. That's my question. Uh, let's hope all of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, yeah. Hmm. I'm pleasantly surprised by this one. Mm hmm. Trip along the seashore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which one of us is going to blend all the four? Of course we're going to blend all four. At the end of the night, of course we're going to blend all four. Of course she's going to blend <laughs> all four. <laughs> I'm going to be eating pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is the tradition. As is tradition, yeah, we, must, so we must follow tradition. All right, I'll give, yeah. you, I'll give you that. Yeah. I can stay around for that. <laughs> In for a dime, in for a dollar. Exactly. In for a penny, in for a pound. <laughs> in for a ducat, <laughs> in for a lira. Uh, uh, in for a rand, in for a Kruger rand. Uh, What's it? In for a Chevy, in for a Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. I like the nose on this one. This one actually smells very nice. It's it's still it's still very honey sweet. Hmm? Yeah, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say it's still very honey sweet, but you actually get some oak now. You yeah, get some. It oak doesn't spice. have the distraction of the bourbon barrel. Well, we this still could be bourbon barrel. We don't know what the hell this yeah, is. That's probably true, but it's but it's actually it's not. It's not got that nose. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hold on. Yeah, oh yeah. Compared no, to no, way better. Wow. Yeah, this one is just so thin. This one is just so thin. It's well, it's underaged, is what it is. Yeah, it's thin and green. Yeah, yeah. It's not like green, like like a young corn whiskey or anything. No, like that. it's but, just young. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. This has some wood spice. I'm getting like a hint. It's got a heartier nose, right? No, like a little bit of pear or something. I was gonna say. Sure. Still kind of butterscotch. A brown pear. A brown pear. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, Maybe was, we should have kept this one last. I was thinking that. <laughs> but then, then again, that's what I said up front. He was like, hey, don't be stupid, Dad. No. I'm like, well, that's, that's me. <laughs> you know, I can't help but. <laughs> no, but I was thinking, put the finishes, put the weird finishes at the, at the end. Okay. But yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. We're we'll drinking. Find out. We're drinking it. It's yeah, all good. Yeah, yeah. It's Wish all you guys good. had some of this and you could play along at They're home. probably drinking something better. <laughs> yes, they all are. That's the problem here. It smells like fir tree. A little bit. So it's like orchard fruit and like, like, uh, yeah, like a big, big old evergreen. I swear to God, that's what I'm getting. Like, yeah, I, see what, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Christmas spices, but like, like, yeah, Christmas spices in an evergreen tree. <laughs> this yeah. is, this is making me feel fucking, fucking merry. I want to dive in. All right, let's do it. Hmm. This is more robust. It is. It's still got the effervescence. Mm -hmm. uh, Donner Pass Whiskey is in. Hey, Donner Pass Whiskey. How you doing, buddy? Uh, Do we know him? I know. I know him. He's in. He's in the chat quite a bit. Yes. So it's always good to see. And I'm Mike, the old man. Yeah. 
<laughs> he rarely shows up for you. Rarely, yeah. You guys streams. haven't seen Donner me. Pass, Donner Pass shows up more consistently than you do for streams. Yeah, I'm a busy guy. You know? <laughs> I need lots of sleep. <laughs> Erica, Erica was I take actually my chair until like two or three push-ups. I go to bed. <laughs> Erica was actually happy that you came on the stream tonight. I'm happy I because came on the stream it means she got to take a break. She finds it hard to stay happy. It's her words, not mine. She doesn't like to stay happy for a full hour. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So she was glad. She was glad you got to. You came in and uh, yeah. took some of the impetus off of her. Dude, that's kind of a problem. You can't stay happy for an hour. I think she means what, like, she give you like, like four engaging, minutes and chuck you out. Engaging. <laughs> oh, okay. She is. She is a naturally taciturn person. Oh, she is. Yeah. She. I will. I, I like. I'll come and be like, "Hey, I love you, sweetie." And her her thing is just gross. <laughs> gross. <laughs> yeah. No, I like. I like her. Yeah. Her wit. Her snark. Her energy. <laughs> yeah. No, she can keep yeah. it going. She's. She says it like it is. I'm very much like the Labrador Retriever in the relationship, and she's like the, <laughs> the angry little cat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, slobbering dog. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Back to the grain stone. Oh yeah. Is that what we're doing? We are doing. <laughs> okay. This reminds me a lot. I thought we were talking to them. What are we well, doing? Yeah, we're doing both. Yeah. We're doing and both. you. I haven't seen you in. Yeah, it's been a minute. Well, I've been I've been working most evenings, and yep. you've been you've been sick. Yeah, yeah. I'm better now. Yeah, yeah. Um, mostly, <laughs> mostly as good as you can be. Yeah, right. There's a low ceiling for that. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, yeah, but I like this one. I don't think it's my favorite. It's still pretty light, just mm -hmm. honey, mm -hmm. honey, caramel, light. Blah blah blah, um, but it is much more robust. Oh yeah, it's got a thicker flavor. It's good. Yeah, it's again not my favorite. Yeah, but I, I tend toward really heavy flavors and mm -hmm. overpowering kind of, mm -hmm. you know, hit you in the, the back of the throat with right. It. But I'm just thinking like when I started drinking whiskey, right? Okay, I got started on the Bell. He was six. Yeah, right. When I was six. <laughs> But like I was drinking Old Thompson for a long time. Oh, that'll yeah. kill anybody. Yeah. But then I that had like my first taste buds. Yeah, right. Old Thompson. Yeah. Okay. Tell the story. Old Thompson. Yep. Uh, then I had the Belveni 12 for the first time, the Ooh. double cask. That was eye opening to me. Yeah, right. But it was too expensive for me to buy. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. If Grangestone 12 had been around when I was in college, if we had had a total wine, right. I would have bought the crap out of this. Oh, sure. Because it was such a, it's a, such a step up from yeah. like your American blended whiskey. And your liver would have loved you. I know. <laughs> I know. I, wow. Who knew? Yeah. Uh, but this is why we got to do the college show. Ben was saying he he had the twenty one year old Grainstone. It reminded him of Dalvini. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, this quite a bit. Yeah. These do remind me of your prototypical Speyside or Highland Highland Speyside that region. There are better twelve year olds. I'll there are that. certainly better twelve year olds. But for three year olds, <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, if this went up against a bunch of non-age oh, statements, this yeah. would blow it out of the water. <laughs> True that. Yeah. Uh, Floyd. Floyd is in. Floyd. Yeah. Um, Jason BC is saying, same, his wife is super logical and stoic, and he's pretty much an English mastiff in human form. <laughs> I love that. Okay. I feel that way, too. I feel that way, too. I feel like... I have a very optimistic view of the world, and I'm just kind of like, ah, everything's gonna work out, everything's gonna be okay. And then but you know what? An English mastiff has much less hair than you do. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can't be that. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, I really want to get one of every kind of smushy faced dog. So I'm gonna get a mastiff, an American bulldog, uh, an English bulldog, a French bulldog, and a little. Oh, wow. Like a little pug, sure. Oh, and a, and a, a Boston Terrier. Yeah. And I want to teach him to line up in in size order. We gotta have a Chihuahua then. <laughs> Chihuahua. <laughs> That's not smushy face. No, it's not. You know, it's a <laughs> tiny little uh, slipper dog. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. When you step on all the time. Yeah. Um, what was I get? Oh, Floyd is saying he got to try some unreleased whiskeys this weekend. Well, do tell. Yeah, do tell. And actually, while you're do telling that, I'm gonna unreleased, unreleased. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm going to oh. pour some of the sherry caps. Oh, yeah. that one hey, let's, quick. let's go. Well, you're telling us about that. Um, Arthur Lopez is asking, is Mortlock 16 worth its price? He's not big on space sides, but he sees it around. I haven't had the 16. What I will tell you, though, is the Mortlocks I have had are fucking fantastic. We've actually got a 19-year-old here. Um, from had. Yeah, I took it home. Did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere. It's somewhere. I think, we, yeah, I think we have a 19. I take stuff home. It doesn't come back. I thought we had one. Oh, yeah. Here we are. The Lonak bottling of Morlock 19. All right. That bring, is bring fantastic. That we'll are cleanse we? our palate with that, right. and we'll move on. You know this is going to blow these out of the water. I know. We'll save it for last. Yeah, we'll save it for the last. Yeah, after we put all four of these yeah. together and but cry a bit. This is one of my favorite bottlings of Mortlock I've ever had. This is so good. And it's a lot like Macallan without the sulfury note. Mm. It's just all... Big red fruits and oh okay. Well, the sulfur notes and... that makes it interesting. I do like the sulfur note. I'm yeah, just saying yeah, yeah. it's like McCallan without without the sulfur, the sulfur notes, yeah. which makes it very drinkable, right? Palatable, right? Okay. Um, yeah, the Mortlock 16. We should. I want that, but I've been trying to save a little bit of money lately, mm. and that's actually the Mortlock 16 I've seen. Right? Is it the Game of Thrones edition? Um, the Game of Thrones edition of Mortlock, I think, was 110, 115. Was no. Yeah. Um, and I paid I paid like 60 for the Lona 19. So I was like, is it really going to compare? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. Side by side, we should is do it? it. We should do it. We yeah. should. We should. We will. Okay. We will. Uh, Tomorrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> ben says, uh, um, you're trying not to say boring. When you say the sulfur makes it interesting, no, it's it's it. Uh, there's a, you know, there's certain elements that just jump out, and you know when you have a touch of sulfur in there, it's like okay, or campfire, you know, yeah, the, the right, really heavy, the struck stone, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah, for sure. It's, 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 it's yeah, no, I got a, you. Uh, a flat whiskey like we've had some today, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, I hear we you. reserve those for the worst whiskey <laughs> wash Wednesday. Bottom shelf bonanza. Yeah. Um, yeah, but what was I going to say? Something else. No, I guess. Okay, here's the thing. I do like that really, that struck match sherry note. Mm -hmm. Like, that's really good to me. And that's one of the reasons I like uh, the Glen Morangy La Santa. Mm -hmm. uh, is because it's pretty light on the fruit, really heavy on the sulfur. Yeah. Um, in my opinion. Makes it unique. Right. That said, there's, I think... Like I think sherry whiskey can be really good without the sulfury note, though. Oh sure. Yeah. 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 So speaking of, let's get into this sherried whiskey. Sherry cask. Sherry cask Granger Stone. Garanchi. Garanchi Lis. Um. I'm, I'm catching a little sherry. Uh, Floyd was saying, "What is he on?" He's on the, uh, what did he try? He tried the Deanstone Virgin Oak. That one, I thought we have a Virgin Oak, a Deanstone at I love that Ray's. word, Oak. Yeah, Virgin Oak. I don't, <laughs> oh, well, that's is that just coming out regionally for you, or is that a new edition of the Virgin Oak? Because, yeah, we've got one of those at, at Ray's. Uh, and then he also had the Ketchik Aja, which is the sequel to the Bunahav and Ketchik. I guess so. No. Yeah, I think that's the boatman. Yeah, everybody but me knows. Ketchikaja is the. I think that's the. That's the boatman. But is it the peated one? Is that the peated Bunahaven? I don't remember. Someone remind me. Um, and then Whiskey Crusader Will is saying the sixteen-year-old Mortlock was good, but it's not one hundred twenty dollars good. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Is like. Can I get Mortlock for better prices? Probably. Well, you can. Yeah. 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 Works at a liquor yeah. store. It's <laughs> the only reason. <laughs> yeah. No, I have I have our spirits director let me know when when the, we've the got stuff comes when in. we've got stuff coming in. Yeah. yeah. We're getting Ardbeg uh, Black in next week, so Ooh. look forward to that review. Uh. So what are you catching on this? That is very light shit. Oh my god! Yeah. That is incredibly you really, light. You really got to dig for it. Yeah. 
Uh, Floyd says, new edition, new edition of the Deanston Virgin Oak. I like that one. I like that one. It's very much a naked malt, like not a lot of, uh, not a lot of like extra flavor sure. kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And who doesn't love naked? No. Um, Floyd is saying, yeah, it is the Peter Bunehaven. <laughs> it's the Bunehaven Smoky Peat finish. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, because if I remember correctly, the Bunahab and Ketchuk is the um, the lightly peated, and then the Mona, the Mona Spirit Ur is their heavily peated new make. So, yeah. But I, I don't. Th I think the Mona is only available at the distillery. Okay, I'm catching more of the sherry on the taste. Yeah. Which is maybe a good thing if you're into sherry. Yeah, it's a little acrid. It is super acrid. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, man. <laughs> like, okay, the bourbon, the bourbon cast was already young. Oh yeah, this is smelling, yeah. right? This one takes all that kind of youthful, yui, greeny, space side funk and dials it up. I don't know. That one, that one's a little funny to me. Yeah, yeah. The bourbon cast actually smells. Better aged than the sherry cast mm -hmm. does. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah. It's sherry. Um yeah, it's not great though. No, not great sherry. <laughs> this must this has to be like second, second fill, third fill sherry. Like there's no way they, they spent a good barrel on this <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. These came out of France cheap. <laughs> yeah, or Spain. Spain. Yeah, Spain. Juarez. Juarez de, Juarez de la Frontera. Those are like the three words I know in Spanish. Meaning? Uh, Juarez on the border. Oh, It's okay. where they make sherry. Okay. Yeah. Typically, I learn, where's the bathroom? <laughs> Give me a beer. How much for the little girl? <laughs> oh, <Kidding>. God damn it. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, okay. We gotta put we gotta put a stopper on that right now. <laughs> uh, I blame it on the alcohol, but I can't. <laughs> um. Oh, Floyd got to try the uh the black. You can't say black. You have to say black. Like a sheep. You're like a sheep. Ooh. It's that's why it's called that because it's the black, black sheep. sheep. Mm -hmm. Cute. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how was it? How was it, Floyd? Um. Hey, hey Jeremy Sims is in. Uh, how are you, Jeremy? We're just up to our usual bullshit. Oh, well, yeah, except, it's, up. except it's him and me now instead of me and Erica. Well, yeah, he's the bullshitter, and uh, the bullshitter, <laughs> and, you know, she would level us. So we're kind of like the two tall guys, and she's the shorter one that balances it all. Right, out, so. knocks our heads together, three stooges <laughs> style. Right. Yeah. Um, I gotta say, of these three, this is disappointing. Oh yeah, 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 by far. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just this is not good. Like sucking on alum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, oh, not man. that I do that much. Yeah, right. you know, I get really hungry. <laughs> and there's nothing in the cabinets. And... Yeah. Uh, oh, is it a Blues Brothers reference? That's what it was. Okay. What's that? Never mind. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Jeremy Sims is saying, yeah, there needs to be an Eric and Old Man episode one day. That's what I've been saying. I need to take a break from being on camera. I need to take a break from being You're so camera. photogenic. You're like, I'm like Simon. You're like <laughs> Mr. Peabody, you know? Hey, Mr. Peabody, what are we drinking today? That's not photogenic. That just means I talk too much. Uh, well, yeah. maybe, maybe we could make you a hand puppet. You could just talk through. There we go. Okay, yeah, I'm just over yeah. the shoulders of Erica and I. Well, that's the thing, though. Erica's worried. Erica's worried that she and you won't have, like, as good chemistry to, like, keep the stream Rolling? Oh yeah, yeah. She would just kick me aside like an old boot. <laughs> yeah. But that's—I think we need to do it. I think I need to take a break. I have been in every goddamn rock cut video. I—I <laughs> I need to get my ass out of here. Let you two. She's very charismatic. Exactly. That would work. Exactly. And I would Everybody just zap all her energy and all. <laughs> Everybody, get get on our Facebook page and just spam spam the Facebook page, because she monitors the Facebook page. She's oh, like okay. the one who, who keeps She's track like, of that. Got it. So 
get on there, spam the Facebook page demanding an Erica and the old man episode. Get on there. Uh. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Don't, but I hope I don't think she's watching right now. I don't think she's watching right now, so she won't see it coming. So no, it's true. Yeah. 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 So she's actually doing something with her life. <laughs> <laughs> Sampling some good, some bad. Yeah, Jeremy just said old man Erica makes me think of old man Logan, like uh, oh, yeah. uh, the comic book. Sure, it's gonna be you and Erica. You're gonna be uh, uh, Hawkeye, she's gonna be old man Logan, and you gotta you, you're gonna have to travel across the country drinking whiskey. You know what? I can't drink this anymore. Yeah, this one, you know. Oh, whiskey crusaders, Will is headed out. Thank you for stopping by, Will. We appreciate it. Say hi to Sarah for us. Mm. I miss them already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't get. I get like the slightest hint of. Uh, that is a dry, dry, dry. It is sugar. super dry. No. It is super dry. I don't know what kind of sherry that was, but it's not. It doesn't taste like Oloroso or uh, uh, cooking PX. sherry. Yeah, <laughs> it tastes like a really dry, very light sherry. And I don't know if that's because they use a really old barrel or what, but. There's really not a lot of you don't even get like the sulfuriness. Mm -mm. It's just it's just like the slightest hint of grape. Yeah. I don't care for it. Yeah. Yeah. So grape. Yeah. Yeah. And it tastes particularly young. So that so, one. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't want to know yeah, that mm -hmm. one's that one's out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So far. So okay. far. So far, the 12 year old, as you predicted. Yeah. So is, far. is the best of the bunch. But rum, who doesn't like rum? Let's do rum. Lots of sugar. Yeah, yeah. Just clam onto the teeth. Yeah. Scrape it I'm, off later. I'm excited for this one. So Could be good. But it's just finished in rum. Right, finished in premium oak casks. You know it's a bad sign if they say <laughs> premium. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Like, like if they said, oh, these are Caribbean oak casks, or these are first fill oak casks, or these are, these are British oak casks. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. No. That's, that would be a good sign. But if it's like premium, that's always a bad Some 20 year old said, <laughs> oh, if we say premium. <laughs> Get out of here, kid. Um, Floyd is saying he couldn't even post pictures of the bottle to social media. The bottle be black. Um, sorry, I wasn't keeping up with the chat. Uh, he thought it was very good, but 130 was too expensive. Mm. Okay. And he couldn't even post about it. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. I believe they are keeping that that tight. Although, funny thing about the Arbeg committee releases. No. Yeah. So for our distributor, I don't remember which distributor it is. I don't know if it's Johnson or Badger or whoever. But they just ship us committee releases. So there's the committee release, right? Of course, everybody knows. And then there's the standard release, which is like 46% versus 52% on the committee release. They just ship them, they just ship them both to us mm. at the same price. And so we're just like, all right, whatever, we'll take it off. Okay, so that's not funny, haha. Ha, that's funny odd. Yeah, that's funny okay. odd. I was, well, I was waiting for the punchline. It's line. not funny, <laughs> funny, but it's just an odd, it's an oddity. It's just like sure. Because like the whole gimmick behind those is that the committee releases are supposed to be exclusive for the committee members and buy you can buy them at uh, the face shield and all that stuff. Sure. And but then like they just ship a bunch to Wisconsin. Plus, uh, yeah, a pro plus or nothing, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So I'm happy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Are we ready? Let's do it. Okay. Oh, before I dive in. Yes. You get to throw out a, a low one. I get to throw out a low one and then bl blend the rest. <laughs> no. No, that's not how this works. Ah. We blend everything on throw this out the, show. I throw out the low no. one then? No. no. Okay. You blend everything on okay. this show. Don't think so. Um, here we go. All right. Let's do it. It's got a little bit of promise. Yeah. It's much better than the it's much better than the sherry version. Yeah. Um. <sighs> I'm gonna be interested in the taste. This this yeah. could be this could be a, good. This could be a winner. It's a bit I kind of want to compare this to the Belveni, the it, Caribbean cast. Oh, by all means. Although which is no, a, me and Erica finished it. Don't. Yeah. Sorry. But yeah, this is. Damn you, too. I know we're the worst. Um, <laughs> this is 
But it's it's in it's, that same vein though. It's honey sweet mixed with a bittersweet molassesy kind of thing. It's kind of like like dark molasses. It's cookies. light though. It is like it, it is it, much lighter than the Belvani version. Yes, absolutely yes. By, by far. Yeah, not kept in the castle. Anymore. Yes. No, they probably should have left this in for like a year or two or five more than whatever they did. <laughs> yeah. Um, Benjamin E says premium oak casks, AKA we dredged them up from a shipwreck at the bottom of the Bahamas. <laughs> nice. <laughs> probably yeah, true. Probably too. true. And then Arthur Lopez is saying he got to try some of the balcones in X saw turns. My man. Oh, Oh, that sounds amazing. You know how much I love softer and cask finish whiskeys. Uh, he says, funky in the best way, almost like a brandy and malt had a delicious whiskey child. Oh, 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 I want that. I want to go to there. That sounds amazing. Uh, what do you think? What do you think? I'm finish? pleasantly surprised. I'm not getting a whole lot of the rum. But after the sherry cast, yeah. I think battery acid would be yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering, how different is this from the bourbon cask? Okay, it is, just on the nose, it is more full. It's more fully sweet than the bourbon cask. Mm -hmm. I'll say that much. Yep. Uh, Patrick Fulmer just popped in. Hey, what do you know about that? How are you doing? Good to see you. Um, and then... Jeremy Sims was saying uh, something about American law means you can't do the normal release method for our Is that because we can't buy it online? Like we can't we can't put in for it through the online uh, thing? Is that something? I don't know. I don't I I've only ever seen it distributed the way we do it, so through the normal channels. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So. And there's a reason for that. I have no clue why. But. Triple triple layered. <laughs> Yeah. Dis distribution. Yeah. If right. you produce, you can't distribute. If you distribute, you, really you can't, can't sell. sell. And if you sell, you can't do either of the others. So Why everybody you... makes a block. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch of middlemen running around. I love money. it. Yeah. Hey, DJ11, how you doing? Uh, good to see you, man. Uh, oh, and Floyd got to try all the committee releases. Very nice. That sounds like a hell of a tasting. And yes, drum is amazing. Drum, is drum my favorite rum finish whiskey? I think it might be. Yeah. Okay, go back to the bourbon yeah. and then taste the rum. Okay, bourbon, just what I expected. Mm -hmm. Vanilla, caramel, very mm -hmm. Light. underaged. Yep. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah, that is much fuller. Mm -hmm. That is much fuller, mm -hmm. and it. Um, and again, it's got that little effervescent. It's effervescent, yeah, <laughs> very much so. But it also has like a slight banana yeah. quality to yeah. it yep, yep. on the finish. Yeah, and it, it doesn't go sour mm -hmm. like the sherry. Yeah, like the <laughs> sherry did. Yeah, it's just, uh, um, so yeah. I take that one and go. Yeah, no, that sherry is awful. Don't get the sherry. The sherry is really bad, you guys. I'm <laughs> sorry to say, I love sherry finished whiskey. This is shit. This is really bad. Some sherry shit. Yeah. So I don't know what. That's like an ice cream flavor, you know? Yeah. <laughs> sherry, sherry shit. shit. <laughs> it's the shits you have after drinking a bunch of sherry. Oh. Um. Then, let's see here. Uh, oh yeah, DJ one one. You did win on the whiskey den uh, chat last night. So yeah. Hey, Sir Tannen. I love that name. Sir oh, it's a great name. Sirloin of beef. Sir Tannen, uh, <laughs> you're up there. You're up there with uh, with DJ one one for good. Right up there for good handles. Cirrhosis of liver. Cirrhosis of liver. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he was just looking at a bottle of Grainstone earlier. He was interested in buying it, but wasn't sure it was worth buying. Seems fortuitous to stumble across the stream. Yes. Very much so. I would agree. Um, I don't know which one you were looking at, but our favorite so far has been the 12. The 12. The yeah. 12 has been very good. It's the one I drank the most of. Yeah. Too, so yeah. 
And then the Grange, we're just now doing the Grange Stone. Grange Stone. Rum cask finish. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just we're gonna, trying to, anyway. We're trying to. <laughs> uh, Let's say it lacks in some characteristics. So it's not horrible. It's not my favorite. I think it's I'm... pretty good. But I think it suffers from the same issue that the other two finishes we're dealing with was that they didn't give it enough, enough time in the barrel to let it take on the characteristics right, right. of the previous. It's, it's a little weak. Yes. You know, yes. True. Yeah. Are these all $25? Per... Yeah. These are, well, 25, 25. These are all like 25. This one's 30 oh, something. Okay. Sure. I can see that. 30 or 40. Got it. Um, Floyd says, my general rule of thumb with uh, TW house releases is to avoid them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and see that. But this wouldn't be the worst whiskey watch. Yeah, you're exactly. <laughs> this this wouldn't be a, a a rocket review if we didn't. The problem with this one oh, is yeah, though, right. this one isn't even technically uh, like a house release, right? It's just that it's only distributed to total wine in the United States. You could, I mean, this they could sell this wherever they want in Britain or whatever. But oh, for whatever sure. reason, yeah. it's a total wine exclusive here in the states, and I think it shows. I think they put the least amount of effort into <laughs> making these like they maybe have the least amount of effort. Come on, it's got a nice label. They put a <laughs> modicum more effort into making these than they did Clan McGregor. Okay. You know what I mean? Fair enough. Because they knew they know that they're trying to sell it to people at Total Wine who are mm -hmm. gonna put it on ice and don't really yeah. care. Well uh, true. And that's maybe. that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Um they're trying to sell product to wine drinkers. Yeah, no. yeah. They're tr they're selling a relatively cheap whiskey to people who are wandering through Total Wine. I think that's that's kind of the the gimmick. Yeah, yeah. Let's pick this up for graduation. Exactly. Love it. No, yeah. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> Benjamin Ease is asking about uh, who's oh. distilling it. It's. So they don't actually tell us. So this is a William Grant and Sons product. So same people who do. We were talking about this at the beginning of the video. Mm -hmm. So William Grant and Sons product, same as Belvenny and Glenfiddich. Um, but it's probably done by Caninvi, right across the way from Belvenny. And then slush through it. Too. Yes. So Belvenny <laughs> Belvenny's doing the mashing. Then they literally slush it over through a tube to Caninvi. Yep. And they do the fermenting distillation. But apparently, Canivy has its own dedicated mash tun at uh, mash tun and washbacks at Belveni. So there's all the Belveni ah, ones, okay. and then there's a Canivy one here. Right, right. But they don't have it in the actual like Canivy area. It's the one that never gets cleaned out. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Made of some. It's the redheaded stepchild <laughs> of Belveni or your copper. Whatever. Oh. Uh... Floyd says they bet the agent with Terrapure. Don't bring up Terrapure <laughs> on this goddamn channel. I am so goddamn sick of hearing about fucking Terrapure. Uh, who doesn't like it? No, I can't even say his no. name. Nobody, <laughs> nobody likes Terrapure. Terrapure can go eat a bag of shitty dicks. Can we say that? <laughs> yes, we can say that. Wow. That's uh, awful. That reminds me of a good joke, though. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, so I'm back at the 12. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's. Well, I'm gonna blend these real quick. Unfortunately, if I drink all the 12, the blend's gonna be horrible. Yeah, well, that's okay. The 12, actually, now that I taste it again, I am curious about what they're doing when they're mashing that because that has such a much more deep, rich it's not smoky, but it's edging on phenolic, like that phenolic spiciness. Um, it's not, not earthy, smoky, peaty, none of that shit, but I'm wondering how they're fermenting that and aging it because they're actually retaining some of that darker, heavier phenolic spice, oh. which I dig. So, no, this yeah. is a horrible, horrible thing we just did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so it's tenet. bubbling. Is it supposed <laughs> to bubble? <laughs> Okay, so here's our plan. Uh, Sir Tannen's asking if the Caribbean cask is, or the the that rum cask, the rum cask is comparable to the Caribbean cask from Belvedere. 
In a word, I'd say no. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's a it's a faint shadow. It is. It it you. I feel like I can taste the same DNA. Yeah. It's got this a similar basis right. in terms of in terms of the taste, but it is it is a faint hearted attempt You're at right. copying it. Right. Yeah. Not not as good. It's it's. I think it's fine. It's the second best of the bunch. But if you were to foist it off on your father-in-law, that would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he's always had the, this is my scotch, don't take it without asking. This is scotch for anyone. Yes, this is very much a scotch for anyone kind of kind of bottle. Sure. I think this is, it is light and sweet enough to be invited. Oh, yeah. I think uh, general alcohol drinkers would uh, appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It just kind of a, a footstep in right. to the whiskey realm. Exactly. I like that. Exactly. It's just mm -hmm. when you compare it to William Grant's other rum cask finishes, yeah, right. it looks like a yeah, right. Pilot. Don't tell them yeah. that. <laughs> work, the, work them up slowly, and the, as they give you money. You know, you yeah, know. <laughs> exactly. All right. Here's can the can enlighten them. That's fine. Yes, it is. That's very fine. You know, that's much better than the first three altogether. Uh -huh. and, uh, it's not as good as the 12. No. But it it's way better than that sherry finish. God damn, that <laughs> sherry finish is horrendous. Um, yeah. Uh, DJ11, he says, the Belveni Caribbean is a total bore until it opens up halfway through the bottle. I don't necessarily disagree. I think, but I think that's very true of a lot of rum cask finished whiskeys. Because I thought the same thing about the drum, Ardbeg drum, was that it was best when you you had had like, you know, the first third maybe was a little funny, and then it got better from there. The first third all at once. And yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I can see where it did better. When you finish off a fifth in a day, yeah, right. the, the last that last third is just so good. <laughs> oh boy! All right, here we go again. No, I, I just augmented this with a little twelve. A little, it's just yeah. a little, a little rough. That is fair. All right, I said we'd finish off with a little bit of Mortlock. Mortlock came mm. up earlier, so we're gonna. This is the low knock Mortlock. This is the 19 year old. 20 locks. So many locks. Uh, Sir Tannen says no one touches his Ardbeg Cory Vrecken bottle without asking. <laughs> yeah. No, that is something. See, my I feel like our, my general rule, rule is like if I have people over, you can taste anything you want. But at the end of the night, if you want to take a bottle home, I've got certain ones. You're here right. To yeah. Here, take those. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'd have to agree. I have so many bottles I could send you people. Just let me know where you live. Do it. I mean, yeah. that's actually something I was thinking about with our Patreon. Oh, is yeah. that I have be been cool. bad about sending out samples. Sure. Right? So Whiskey samples. Whiskey Other samples. samples he's really good at. <laughs> so I've been thinking what we need to start doing because I have a lot of whiskey and we need to no get through room. some of it. Yeah, yeah, Erica's getting on my case. We should start sending out samples to the patrons. Perfect. Yeah. When we should have patron and patron only streams yep. where you get to come on and we're and we could review the samples we sent you. We'll send you the samples. You get to come on along with us and we'll all hang out and in a week later drink the samples. Yeah. Yeah. So can't send out the bad samples. Well, no. no. Well, well, unless you want bad samples. <laughs> if you want to experience the true rock gut review style, uh, yeah, you, you should, can. You should really play along. Yeah, yeah, you can have some. You can have some bad samples. Well, maybe we we'll send one bad. Sample. <laughs> you know, we don't want to kill the patronage. No, no, no. no. Um, I still owe. I still owe uh, Matt from Whiskey Crusader some lark, and I'm terrible. I'm because I'm terrible, and I need to send him that. Um, but we will. We will be getting on that. ASAP. Um, so yeah, but let's let's talk about some Mortlock real quick. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have totally forgotten everything about mm. Mortlock. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> I used to know way more than I. I've forgotten. I've forgotten it's, all my it's talking. Got a little points. touch of anise. Anise, you think? Yeah, something's biting me in the side of the tongue. 
See, here's the thing about like coming off the grindstone stuff. So like these are independent like, of the Z. I know, yeah. I know, right? Especially if you say it in in Gaelic. <laughs> Let's not do that. Les Negranchi. That sounds sounds like some sounds like something you would have to put a cream on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> big tube of. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mike Myers in. Um, but yeah. So what was I gonna say? Oh, this. I think that bite is actually sulfury. Like this is not sulfury okay. compared to a lot of other sherried whiskeys, right? I don't think. I don't think. But compared to the whiskeys we just have, this is so much richer, heartier, deep, mm -hmm. deep sherry, sulfury bite. You know what I mean? I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I dig it. <sighs> DJ11 says rot gut samples. They should be afraid. <laughs> Pre-tasted. Yeah. Right. Pre exactly. <laughs> Pre-drunk. Mm. You're right. Mm. I love Mortlock so much. You could drink that the rest of the night. I love Mortlock so much, you guys. <laughs> so, so, so much more. Um, if he could take it outside. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, Ben's got to head out. Thank you for coming in. Oh, he thought you said it's got a touch of ass, not ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a little licorice. This is yeah. a tiny. Yeah. No, I see what you mean, though. It is much more. It is more spicy. No, oh, yeah. It's Completely. more spicy. Yeah. It's got more vegetalness, balanced out by red fruit, nope. sulfuriness, a little bit of grape. I yeah, for sure. Hey, Trev Wilson it, uh, is in. Pretty much kicks ass on the green stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm why did? Why are we drinking this again? Um, I think someone just mentioned it in the chat, and we're like, "All right, yeah, we're we should compare it." We're drinking more <laughs> arc now. <laughs> yeah. Mention uh, a few others. We'll drink those. Yeah, we're working our way up to the good stuff. We started uh, really low. The bar was like. Exactly. Yeah, at my ankles. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the one stream you come on, we don't drink we, we don't drink anything good until like the very end. <laughs> when Erica's on stream, we drink we drink the good, good stuff, stuff first the whole, the whole time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Uh hey Richie. Yeah, that's how he treats me. Uh, yeah. it's very much so. Uh Richie, how you doing? DJ Owen, that's why. Because someone brought up the new Mortlock uh GOT. Right. Oh, okay. And I said I hadn't tried it. I was a little worried about the price tag, though, because no. $120 for 16-year-old Mortlock is a little steep. Yeah. Can't argue that point. Yeah. But because like I was saying, this one I got for 60 and it's incredible. Um, that said, the more, the 16 might be fantastic, too. I don't know. I'd have to try it. Well, you could get the 16 on a five-finger discount. Exactly. And off we go. Yeah. See, if I get caught, not only do I go to jail, I also lose my job. Yeah, so right. well, that could be a problem. <laughs> Eric, Erica would and find... And the whiskey stream would just... I don't know if Erica would be mad at me for going to jail. She would definitely be mad at me for losing my job. Yeah, right. I think she would find me, like, late at night in my prison cell and shank me to death. <laughs> She'd break in just to murder me. <laughs> just beat the shit out of me. I think we all would be there. Yeah. Late at night, Mom, Eileen. Yeah. Right. Spread the bars. Yeah. Oh, hey, um, Arthur, I forgot. It's Bottled and Bond Day. So we should finish with something that's Bottled and Bond. Yes, that okay. is a good point. That is an excellent point. Thank you. I totally forgot it was Bottled and Bond Day. Did you know they got Bottled and Bond brandy? No. Yeah, they sure do. I mean, why not? But yeah. Sure. Um, what do I, I have? Much. That's, mm, that's a bib. I need a bib. While he reaches, I'll entertain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I got Bottle and Bond 1792. We're going to go oh, with that's that. That's a good one. We're going to we're gonna hit some of that right quick. That's not it. Uh, we'll just push this aside. Um... DJ one one saying one sixty seven in Costco for fifteen. Jeez, man, that's pretty heavy. Like I like Mortlock a lot. I don't know if I want to pay that much though. That's but you know, it comes in a drum because yeah, Costco, everything is like 
thumb <laughs> size. Yeah, this Army government issue. Yeah. So this is 1792 Bottle and Bond. Everyone knows about the Bottle and Bond Act. It was a way to make sure that the U.S. government got its tax money and avoided poisoning people with airsats liquor. There you go. Because a lot of people were putting nail polish remover. I don't think they had nail polish remover back then, but they were putting. You know, oh, formaldehyde of, yeah, and all kinds of wood alcohol. Stuff. Yeah, they were putting all sorts of wood alcohol and shit into their bourbon to cut it and to extend it. Kind of like a drug dealer does with fentanyl. <laughs> there you go. Not that we know anything about yeah, that. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was that is a thing. Um, but yes, this is the 1792 bottle. Oh, delightful. Bottle. This is actually a single barrel pick from my employer at Ray's. So my my boy Eric Schmaltz does excellent single barrel picks. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen him a couple of times on the show. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, he knows a lot. He talks a lot. He's good people. Yeah, he's good yeah. people. Um, DJ11, Henry McKenna 10. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good stuff. I got to, I, we have it at the bar at Ray's and we don't have it for sale because we, we have to have some on stock for the bar, but God, it's so good. It's so good. We can't, we can't sell it anymore because we just blow through it in an instant nowadays. Oh. Mm. I really like 1792. This is awesome. I yeah, really yeah, like yeah. 1792. This is amazing. Um, Floydian says Rocket Review Prison Who Tradition. We could do that. It's not that hard. All we needed some old bread and and a sock. We could do it. Yeah. I had a client who got who got put in the hole for for seg. Yeah, wow. in, in seg for for running a uh, secret liquor liquor business in the prison. Wow. Yeah. How do you manage that? I mean, he was he literally. I mean, he took water from the sink yeah. and an old sock yeah. and like prune juice or whatever they were serving at the wow. place. You take some old bread yeah. and you get, you know, I, there's wild yeast. Everywhere. Are you listening? There's, <laughs> yeah, there's wild yeast everywhere. You mix that all up in old, in like an old shirt or something, strain it through. That's basically wart. Right. And then you let it ferment. Okay. Yeah. So he was, he was selling air sets. Like prison mm -hmm. beer. Yeah. Prison, yeah. 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 Oh, no. And they caught him. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Sims says, shame 1792 just doesn't hold its own weight because they had that uh, barrel house collapse. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Okay. You know, I'm not that far gone. There were like three of those. I might be old. There were three of those within like two years because it was... 1792, then OZ Tyler, then uh, the fire at Jim Beam. Oh, right. I remember that. Yeah. 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 So, um, although Devastating. when OZ Tyler fell down, I don't think anyone cared. Because <laughs> <laughs> Terra Pure is bullshit. One more time. <laughs> Terra Pure is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we found that out the hard way after how many samples? Like three? Oh my god. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great theory, but you know. If a certain someone watches this video, we're gonna get a bunch of hate comments. <laughs> <laughs> there it, is. it only works in theory. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we should probably be finishing up. I don't know because we, I mean, I'm good to keep sitting here drinking, but I think my bourbon journey might be getting on at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock? Yeah, and I'm not going to miss it. Yeah, so if he is, we are going to hop off because we don't want to go head to head with uh, Scott. Well, it'd be sad to watch everybody here go, yeah, right. down to exactly. nothing, and then all of a sudden they're over there. And I'll exactly. just make people, and I couldn't sleep at night then. <laughs> no, I can't sleep at night anyway. Uh, That's just being old. Yeah, for sure. like that. <laughs> I'm just a small boy. Takes, takes me an hour to pee. You know, just, I'm just a small boy with a prostate the size of a grapefruit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, but I won't bore you with my problems. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, happy to be drinking with you people. This is great. Uh, it's good to be back. Arthur Lopez is on the Dickel bottle and bond. Oh yeah. I I like George Dickel. I like George Dickel. Although 
recently the big thing has been people coming in mm-hmm. and trying to get the that 13 year old bottle and bond and i've heard mixed reports about it because uh taylor copland cope whatever the, i don't remember his name he's a guy on twitter he's like a whiskey reviewer on twitter okay. who said it was one of the worst things he's ever had yeah. and i respect him because he's kind of like me he sure. doesn't like hold his oh, tongue right, right, right. he just he just runs his mouth and i respect that i respect <laughs> i respect someone's ability to just shit on sure <laughs> shit on everybody yeah <laughs> um but like he was saying that it was just it was like drinking mineral spirits or something like that and other people have said it's the best goddamn thing they've ever had sure so i don't know i don't know. each his own yeah and that's why we have a plethora of whiskeys. Yeah, no. for sure. For sure. I don't know. I want to try it because either it's going to be very good right. and we can have it on the show or it's going to be very bad right. and we can have it on You're the show. Right. <laughs> the only thing we haven't done on this show is chunky vomit. So <laughs> we've got low standard again. <laughs> Do you remember who was here for the white Norwegian? Oh. Sound off in the chat if you remember the white Norwegian. Um... Because that was one I nearly barfed into my own glass. <laughs> and then drank it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Patty from My Whiskey Den is here. Patty, I guess I guess this, this stream is running long. So thank, I'm glad I'm glad we get to see you here. If if Scott from My Bourbon Journey isn't coming on, okay. I'm just gonna keep this stream running. Are we gonna entertain for another hour? You don't have to, but I'll, I'll stick around. around. I'll I'll just hang out. I don't really it's care. Nap time for me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Arthur Lopez says he got two bottles before the whiskey of the year thing. He got them for seventy out the door. Nice. Mm. Uh, he personally likes it, but it ain't special. Uh, he'll be yeah. oh okay nice cool. I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. I could see it being good because I like Dickel products. Um, Uncle Nearest is a uh, independent know. bottling of Dickel. And we love that shit. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Although, uh, although Erica, <laughs> really, Erica loves really loves Uncle yeah, Nearest. Right. But the thing with Uncle Nearest, though, is I, and that's the question, though. You've had two different Uncle Nearest. Yes, the 1884 yeah. and the 1856. Right. Um, the 1850. We've actually had three though, because the 18 we had the 1856 bad edition, mm. which was a Rock Out Review episode. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there was. Some um, there is some amount of variance with Dickel barrels because that that eighteen one of those eighteen fifty six Uncle Nearest right. was the devil's <laughs> the goddamn oh, awful it was it was the devil's taint man <laughs> it was like drinking it was like drinking shit in a glass so there you had to use a spoon yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah. Yeah, so basically, I don't know. There may be some variance in Dickel products that oh, I'm could sure. explain sure. some of that. Sure. Some of that. Yeah. Depending on the year, the heat, the, you know. Exactly. Especially bottled in bond, that's one distilling season. It may be different from season to season. Oh, yeah. So depending on when you bought yours, it could be different. So, yeah. No. What is that bread that you take a bit of and you keep doing the other breads? Sourdough. No. Yes. Yeah. Maybe. Sourdough. Okay, cool. It's sourdough starter. I wonder yeah. if we did like whiskeys that way. We do. Okay. We do. That is what a sour mash is. Okay. So keep it going. Yeah. And, uh, it's it's yeah. always the same kind of product coming right. out the back door and into our mouths and well, out the of the other orifices. <laughs> <laughs> in did your I eye. say that? That's how <laughs> I drink whiskey now. I got a <laughs> syringe and I inject it straight into my eye. Um, but no, because, um, but well, the difference is though, okay. So when you, when you do a sour mash though, you're using back set, you're using stillage from what's left in the, uh, still, which is brilliant. Right. The problem with that is though, it keeps the fermentation. It keeps the fermentation consistently acidic, right? So you don't have germ, you don't kill germs. Right. So you have a consistent fermentation. The difference is that with whiskey, as opposed to like beer or bread, is the aging process. Eh, yeah. So there's really no way to control what's happening yeah. from barrel to barrel, right. unless you want you take the time to move the barrels around and slosh them differently. And, yeah. yeah. Put them back all around. And even then, different barrels might go bad. Sure. You know. So 
that's part of what a master blender's job is to try to make the most consistent product possible by tasting from all these different barrels, putting them together in a way that mimics previous batches. Right. But it's that's not something you can do every time. Right. There was actually something when we were at Distill America, um, the Redemption Master Blender was there, uh, Carpenter. He was talking about that, and he was saying his goal for any one batch is to, he'll have like two dozen samples, and he'll go through and taste all of them. His goal is to make a batch that is 90% consistent with previous batches and 10% refinement. So like so make it better. 10% yeah. of, he's trying to make it 10% better than last time, but 90% of it is exactly the same. Sure. So you got a consistent product, so you go on and buy the same thing year after year after year. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I learned something today. Yeah. I can go home now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. So I should catch up with these comments. I was talking a lot. Oh, hey, hi. Rich is saying the 1820 single barrel is fantastic. It's an 11. I have not. We have not seen any 1820 around here. I would love to have some. I really would. It sounds it's it sounds really great. Um, have we done a grand old par? No, we have not. We've done a lot of things that have old in the name. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Uh, my buddy at work's got one for us. Uh, bought in 1960. Still's got the state seal on the mm. top. Old Jefferson, maybe. Old Jefferson? Something like that. Yeah, it was weird. I was like, what the hell? I mean, Bring there is in. there's a Jefferson's brand, but I don't think they were making it in the 60s. Yeah. It seems yeah. like super old, super crazy. He's bringing it in for me. And okay. Him. Neat. So Neat. Yeah, yeah there's a the seal. There was a woman who was willing to sell me some super old Jim Beam decanters. Okay. But I was like, she wanted a lot of money for them. Yeah. And I was like, I'm pretty sure, sure those are, are lead lined. Oh, so yeah, you gotta be careful with that because even the old, it's not because like the uh, the ceramic ones, yeah. those are definitely lead lined. You yeah, don't right. want to drink those. But even the old crystal ones have that lead crystal. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. leaches in. Yep, yeah. yeah, so sticks in the fatty. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, rips apart your liver. Yeah, and you lose a lot of weight and you get stupid all of a sudden. It's <laughs> weird. It's get that, the lead's got to go somewhere. It goes right there. Yeah, get that syphilitic brain just like Al Capone. <laughs> you ever hear uh, that story? How Al Capone got to prison and he basically just lost his goddamn mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 idiot. <laughs> Untreated syphilis for like twenty years straight. That's got to be bad, but you know. I've only gone 15, so what do I know? <laughs> um, Dustin says, wonder if they've heard of Thomas Jefferson back in the 60s. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm a you know product of that age. Yeah, you are. <laughs> What's the old joke? Like, if you remember Woodstock, you weren't there. Right. <laughs> no. Yeah. So. There's a little young for Woodstock. Mm -hmm. But yeah, close. he had an afro. Oh, I did. He yeah. did in a pic. Oh my god! Yeah, you had a. <laughs> you gotta see the pictures. I should bring a picture. Oh, uh, bring it. Yeah, we'll put it here. We'll put it. We'll put this now. Yeah, it's it's the hell. <laughs> well, see, you. Yeah, I I have very naturally fine hair, but you used to have like a big curly. My daughter's yeah. got my hair, yeah, and I want it back. She stole your hair. Yeah. yeah, my kid's sister has that really really thick curly curly black. Yeah. No, that yeah. was me. I don't want to... Look what yeah. happens when you age. Uh, DJ11 is saying, Costco's just picked up the Jameson Black Barrel. Is it worth picking up? That used to be my favorite Irish whiskey. Black Barrel. Original Black Barrel. I'm assuming you've got the new one because, um, yeah. But the original Black Barrel was so goddamn good. And I don't know if the new Black Barrel is just different or what it was but or maybe on my palate change no it could be too yeah. maybe it my was... maybe i got used to heavier shit right but yeah oh, yeah i started out as lightweight and yeah he, he introduced me to this yeah good stuff yeah like, so yeah, like try this yeah try this no. i don't know i really like black barrel but like the new stuff is not as i would try it i would try it Costco. i would pay like 20 25 bucks for black barrel if it's more than that, I probably would skip it. So that's my opinion. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Peabody. 
<laughs> hey, Jermaine Compton. Jermaine, uh, the first. The first amongst equals is in the chat. He was our very first patron, you know. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Rock on. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we, we bought a wee baby Seagram 7 that we did on a <laughs> Worst Whiskey Watch. It was awesome. Thank you for the donation. Yes. Well, no, I think he, I think he's actually a warrior of distinction in work. So, yeah. Wow. That's cool. the yeah. that's that's the good that's the good level. Yeah. Um, I have yet to subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's just uh, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. It is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then you get a sore Peter, and everything yeah. Peter's out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you just don't let your Peter get raw and chapped. <laughs> um, yeah, Mark. Oh, Mark Goings on is in the chat. I didn't see you there, buddy. Um, he's saying we need a picture of Mike of the Fro. Yeah, I remember finding your your senior high school yearbook. And oh, seeing you at the Fro. God, that was the yeah. funniest thing. Oh, it's junior prom, senior prom. Oh yeah, the uh, maroon tux, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I owned it, but I wore it two years, so I know. <laughs> uh, Jason Busey, okay, um, he's asking: Is the weird French guy the the cleric still a patron? Okay, Brad Leclerc. I don't want to spread Brad Leclerc's business on the internet. No, no, it's not. But I'm going to. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. See, that was a patron level that's supposed to be be like Brad. So you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No. Yes. Um. So suffice to say that Brad Leclerc is still a patron. Yes. Yes. Yes, he is. And we love him dearly. We love him dearly. Yeah. Every chance uh, we get. Uh, DJ One was saying the Black Barrel is twenty nine ninety nine. I think the ninety nine cents is is not a deal breaker. <laughs> twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, that's too many nines. Hmm. I love seventeen ninety two so much. Well, after the rest of the swill we drank today, yeah. yeah hello. Well, that was good. Yeah, but but seventeen ninety two is just so goddamn good. I like it. I, this I've got to stop because I've got to drive. Yeah, that's that's oh. true. That's true. You don't. You can head out if you want to. I can just hang out for a minute. I got okay. nothing to do tonight. Go cool. except for edit. Um, that's a lot. Yeah. Although we're getting better at this. He only has to take out half of the shit I say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason BC says he's not the decimator. Yes, that is true. You are still. You are still our decimator. So you know where that word comes from. In ancient Rome, if an army was mutinous or wasn't doing their job, they would count off by 10. Mm. And the first nine guys had to beat the 10th one to death with their fists. I like that. Yeah, that's why it's decimation. Can we do that at work? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's awesome. <laughs> I would love. I hate yeah. to be the 10th guy. Right, right. But that's nine times out of ten, I'm not going to be the tenth guy. That's the problem. Like, get in, get in the line first, so that yeah. way you know. <laughs> hey, I'm here. <laughs> that way you're number right. one or two. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's better than shooting people. Is it? Yeah. Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you look at what happened at Molson Coors. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Yeah, we had uh, shooting here. In oh, Milwaukee. don't bring. Oh, oh, I was God. making jokes. Now you made it all serious, and now oh, I feel bad for laughing. Well, I feel bad for making the jokes because <laughs> yeah, what happened was. Hurt. Yeah, no, that was fucked up. Yeah. That was that was really that was that was tragic. Yeah, yeah. look at a brewery. How, how good does it get? It doesn't get better. Yeah, you know? no, that was very sad. And okay, less sad. Yeah, that was that was an unfortunate. I mean. There are there are a lot of people, very angry people. That's who true. Should should not have guns. Let's face no, it. Right. <laughs> yeah, or knives or pointy objects. Or well, uh, Jason Busey says he's not as fat, fond of his nickname anymore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I ruined it for you. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, but the font of all knowledge. Yeah. I know. Oh, see, I know stuff that's esoteric stuff. Esoteric it just stuff. gloms on them. I know stuff that is never going to be. Ask him what my, my birthday is. When is my birthday? October 3rd. Close. 13? 13? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I knew it was a three. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it was a three. So. Uh, Mark Goings On is asking if we get to punch Jason Busey at the Rocket Gathering. No, Jason Busey has to punch all of you. 
Yeah. Well, That's yeah. how it works. <laughs> wow. Uh, Jeremy Sims said the old man shooting his mouth off. Bad pun. <laughs> That's a... Get the, uh, no, no good. See, now this shit is now this shit is online for all time. Like we can't we can't get rid of this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I'm just backtrack a little. Oh, it's okay. Good. They'll understand. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You know what I really love? As long as my wife doesn't see this shit, no, you know she's gonna say you've been drinking for I have, two hours. I have been making no, no, no. no this no. this is just coke with water. <laughs> I am I am really glad mom doesn't watch this channel. Oh, I know, right? I have made some very dirty jokes. Oh sometimes related to my to my family. That offend me. Yeah. So and I'm, you know <laughs> her jokes I tell that, you know. Yeah. Anyway. But anyway, point being, I love 1792 because it is a high rye bourbon. It smells like goddamn spicy rye to me. And it I does. Love it. It's great. Yeah. It just and the bottling bond, with flavor. The bottling bond is fantastic. The full proof is better, but they love both the shape of the bottle. So, I know hey, it's a fun shape. It's a great shape. You know, uh, you know, Iron Root, the yeah. and how they have those big fat oh, bottles, yeah, the big square, yeah, yeah, the wide. They are getting rid of those. Why? Because bartenders were saying it was too hard oh, to clumsy. keep on the shelf. Like they, like it didn't fit. Okay, it yeah. didn't fit right. Sure. And uh um, too bad. That was a cool bottle. I know. Yeah, I know. You bludgeoned a man to death with that thing. Yeah, and and now they're going over to you know the which one? It's the XR. Is that what it is? CR XR, the lower proof, uh, Arbiter Arbinger, Harbinger. That's what it is. Right. The lower proof one. That's the new style of bottle that everything's going to be in. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I'm sad I'm, about. I'm that. sad on that too. I'm going to go cry. Okay. I so, didn't, with that, you're out. Okay, <laughs> I'm out. Come, come, come through this way so you don't knock over the uh, the what do you call it? I'll do it. Cheers, <laughs> uh, ah, I'll hang out for a minute longer. As long as, as long as people, as long as people want to hang out, I'll hang out. So I'm gonna, I'll stick around for a bit because I don't think Scott went on, so we're just gonna keep this train wreck rolling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, XC, thank you for Roman 90, there we go. Um, thank you, Arthur, you are awesome. Uh, um, Jeremy Sims is saying we gotta edit up a greatest hits for Erica and give it to my mom, no. No, she will. She will actually beat the ever-loving shit out of me. That would be a bad thing. Or she'd just be really disappointed me in me, and that would be worse. Um, Arthur Lopez is asking, what whiskey has me most psyched? Ooh, that is a really good question. Um, I'm trying to think. What are some new releases that are coming out that I'm looking forward to? Uh, oh, ooh, Dingle. Dingle, they we just got their sherry finish over here. Um, I'm excited to see the new additions. Um, I think they're all going to be various single malt finished stuff for a while. Um, I don't know what the finishes are going to be, but I'm I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see what they come up with next. Uh, actually, it's a lot of Irish stuff. I'm excited for a lot of Irish stuff because I think coming up. We just started getting Connacht stuff over here. Actually, Thursday is going to be a Ballyhoo Connacht uh, review. So I'm excited for that. But I'm excited to see what happens with their house distillate now that they're coming out with that stuff. Because the Ballyhoo is very good. Um, but I'm ex but it's a sourced one. So I'm excited to see what they're doing with uh, that. And then, oh, yeah, uh, Andrew Spirell. Hey, Andrew, how you doing? Um, he's saying it's time to start thinking about St. Patrick's Day whiskey. Teeling, yeah. Teeling pot still. They've got their two editions now, neither of which came over stateside, which I'm mad about, but I would for I'll forgive them if they can ship some of that over sooner rather than later. Um, I think that's one I'm definitely waiting for. Uh, Stitch in Time from Howell, Michigan. I don't know if I've seen you in here before. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. 
Um, so yeah, that's where I, that's mostly what I'm excited for on the Irish side of things. Scotch wise, I am goddamn Brook Laddie needs to release their rye sooner rather than later. I'm just gonna say that right now. Um, I I've been waiting for that shit for like a year and a half now, and they need to. They I don't don't even bother aging it. Don't even bother aging it. Age it for like a year. Or however long you have to do it for the Scotch people, like fucking three years, fine, three fucking years, get that shit out the door, okay? Because because I've been waiting on that for a while now. Um, yeah, yeah. What about American stuff? I'm trying to think of American stuff. Um, e. H. Taylor has their new 18 year old marriage coming out. Um, that's, I don't know when that's coming out, how soon that's going to be hitting shelves. Probably pretty soon. Cause they, they just announced it. Um, I am curious about that. Cause it's, a, it's basically a four grain bourbon. Um, it's basically, it's basically a four grain bourbon. It's a, a weeded, it's wheat corn malt married with a wheat, no, a rye corn malt malt um and i'm curious see the thing about that is the thing about with eh taylor releases is that it could be very good it also could just be tater bait you know they could just be pulling a tater baiter and they're releasing an eh taylor just to try and uh, uh pull in the people who are willing to go bourbon hunting so i don't know that one sounds interesting to me is it probably going to be overhyped and more expensive than it needs to be? Yes. And will the secondary market motherfuckers ramp that up? I'm pretty sure. Uh, Andrew Sproul saying they can't have to age it much longer. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Um, and honestly, that's the thing about a rye, a rye whiskey is don't, don't overage that shit, Brooke Laddie. Like if there's one thing I pray to God Brooke Laddie doesn't do is they don't overage that shit. Um, because there, that is the best way to ruin a rye whiskey, in my opinion, is to just have that way, way too oaky. Uh, and then, oh, Jeremy Sims is saying new Froak this year. Um, and then Robert has something very coy. He's been about, they have a new rye in the works. Okay. That is one thing I do have to say. I am so fucking excited to see uh, Balcones distribution reach Wisconsin. It's happening right around my birthday too, which is gonna be fantastic. Um, so I'm super excited about that. We're not, I mean, obviously we're not gonna see the super, the super weird, interesting bottles, but I'm just glad to have some, the basic line here in Wisconsin. Cause before we would see bottles, like we wouldn't see bottles in Wisconsin. You could get random bottles along the Illinois border, um, but then you had to take a trip down there, and that was annoying, uh, especially because Illinoisans are the worst. Yeah. Um, but now that Balcones is actually going to be in Wisconsin proper, that is that is going to be fantastic. Uh, DJ11, he's saying the he can't find the wine-finished green spots anywhere. Yeah. No, I, yeah, same here, man. Like those, all of those and the red spot are impossible to get in Wisconsin, which is just too bad. I'm lucky I got to try them when we were at the vault for uh, the ball. So I, not to brag or anything, but I'm bragging a little. Honestly, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Chateau, it was like Chateau Moli. Molina, Malou, I don't remember. Uh, I, that green spot, I think I actually like better than the red spot. Red spot is not bad. It's There is a fine balance, I think, with Irish whiskeys, particularly like the red spot, not the red spot, uh, red breast lime, where if you over oak them, I do think it's detrimental to the whiskey. Um, not saying they become bad, but there's just sometimes there are younger variants of Irish whiskey that I like better than their older counterparts. Um, yeah. 
Uh, Arthur's saying we may get the Froak. It's becoming a standard annual release. Nice. I am excited. Uh, Chateau Montalina. Thank you, Richie Z, my man. Yes, yes. Those ones are fantastic. Uh, yeah, Mark, and Mark Owens on just said the same thing. The, is it either Leovo Barton or Montalina? Montalina, thank you. I am a huge fan of those. Um, I think the old man left his 1792 here. Probably a good thing he had to drive. This is the Morlock, so I'm going to... I'll just keep sipping on this and chatting with folk. If you want to keep hanging out, I'm good to I'm good to keep hanging out. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is coming up out of Texas right now. I'd like to see Banner Wheat get a better distribution. Um, I think that's that is an underappreciated Texas whiskey that um, no one's really like I say, no one's been paying attention to it because you've got these big stalwarts in Balcones and Iron Root and Andalusia. Um, and even still Austin's getting some attention, but I think Banner Wheat, I I appreciate a good wheat whiskey. And the longer they age that, I think it, because we, we had it at the first gathering down in Texas, then we had it at the Bastards Ball a year later, and it had improved monumentally. Um, so that's, that's pretty exciting for me. And I'd love to see, see some more. Arthur Lopez says, oh, Arthur Lopez says the Montalina is the, uh, Green Spidey Sandwich St. Patrick's. Nice. Yeah. Um, DJ One Win says my palate is broken. As I'm alluding to the Red Breast 21, which is my favorite of the bunch. It's so, so good. It is good. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm not saying it's not good. I just think excessive oaking for a red breast, it doesn't help it. I just I just think red breast 12 calf strength is my, that is my perfect, that is the perfect spot for me. It's It's got the high alcohol, a lot of flavor, perfect amount of age for me for a red breast. Not saying, not saying the 21 isn't good. The 21's great. For my money though, I'm going to take the calf strength. Uh, hey, Jason Voorhees is in. Um, Jason Busey is saying there's a new Bullet Distillers Edition. I have not seen that. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. But that sounds that sounds fun. Um, Jeremy Sims. He needs to get his hands on more Brimstone. See, man, Brimstone is Brimstone is really good. He's saying he's saying if, if he likes it or if he loves it. I see that's the thing about brimstone. Everyone I've given it to likes it. Like, I don't know if it's the best smoky whiskey in the world. I don't even think it's all that smoky or acrid compared to other ones. Like, for for example, like Kill Homan, Kill Homan, the Meet the Peat Tour is way, way, way more acrid, way more smoky than brimstone. Like, if you're if you're looking for something super acrid, I don't think brimstone is what what some people say it is that said everyone i've given to it to fucking loves it um so yeah uh jason brimstone is a corn whiskey uh it's more than 80 percent corn but they can't call it corn whiskey as far as i know because they do it in a new oak barrel they used to it used to be a proper corn whiskey it used to be done in a used barrel um it was at least 80% corn in, in a used barrel. So they had corn whiskey on there. And I think they recently changed it to be uh, just un generic whiskey, no grain label on there. I think because they changed the barreling. Um, if someone wants to correct me on that, I may be wrong. But I think that's why they had to change it from corn whiskey to just generic whiskey um, because of the change in barreling. So... Yeah, yeah, but it's very good. Mm. All 
Arthur Lopez is saying he's got the uh, he likes the current batch of the brimstone. They've got the blend down right now. That is fair. That is fair. It's I don't know which how which batch we had of this. I think. Hold on. Hold on. I have to dig through dig through the shelf. Um, but I think if I remember correctly, nope, that's not it. Ah, I can't find it. Oh, well, I think we had it just after the label change and it's not as, it is pretty sweet. It is pretty sweet. Um, it's not, it is very wood smoky, campfirey, all that, but it's not ashy earthy. You know, it's not like. It's not like eating phenolic. It's not like eating handful of phenols like you do with other stuff. Uh, oh, Arthur Lopez says, yeah, they had to start using the generic whiskey label because of the barrels. Okay, that's what I figured. Hey, Bayou Drams, yeah, happy happy bottle and bond day for sure. Which is funny because we sh we totally should have taken advantage of that, and we didn't. We only had the one bottle and bond. Everything else was scotch today. So let's make a bottle and found scotch, everybody. That's a thing. Uh, Jason Busey. Uh, has anyone ever blended a rum and a whiskey together instead of aging in a rum barrel that you know of? Yes. Yes, they have. One second. Um, this was actually something I was saving for a future review. But as long as you bring it up, we might as well taste a little bit of it. So this is this is the where's the tab on this little fucker? Um, I'm not seeing it. I wonder if I can just rip it. Um, this is the Basil Haynes Caribbean Reserve Rye. Um, so this is much much in the same style of their dark rye, where they did it with a touch. They actually blended port into it. Um, this is a similar idea, but they did just a touch of rum. Um, obviously, this was all inspired by the uh, Dark Horse rye that came out of Canada a few years ago, which was actually one of the first ryes I ever had, and I really fell in love with. Um, we were at a tasting, me and myself and Erica, not so long ago. Come on. Um where we did, we got to have the full Basil Hayden's line and then the new Baker's seven and all that, all that jazz, uh, the whole Booker's, all the Booker's stuff. Um, this one, I got to say the, as much as I loved, I'm going to need a knife or something. As much as I loved the dark horse from Alberta, um, which was their, yeah, that was their sherry, uh, the sherry thing that they did. Um, I was not a big fan of the dark rye from Basil Hayden's. It is, it is weird. It is really, really weird. Um, it is, it's like drinking a basement, like drinking a cellar, man. Um, I don't know that that which is not for me. It was definitely not for me, um, but yeah, this one, this one I liked. It's not as sweet as you might expect. Mm, come on, fucker. There we go. Um, it's not as sweet as you might expect a, rye, a rum finish to be. Ah. Um, God damn, this little motherfucker is jammed in there. All right. Oh, hey. It's that secondary veto, the not real veto. How are you, not real veto? There we go. God damn, it's like they didn't want me to drink their whiskey. All right. Vito says, Ed, why I we why you weak? 
See, I've got Erica to open all my bottles for me. I've got a, I've got my lovely girlfriend to, to do it for me. Who do you have, Vito? You're all alone in the world. I've taken everything else from you. You're gonna, you're gonna go home to visit your mom one day, and I'm gonna be sitting there, just in the kitchen, eating, eating baked ziti. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is, this is really, really good. Um, and it's, and I think the reason this is good is because they didn't go with an overly sweet rum. Um, <laughs> Jeremy Sims, wait, does this mean in another life, Erica and Vito were an item? She gave you up for the taller man. Um, this is the, re I think the reason this is good is because they went with a pretty bittersweet molasses forward style of rum. They didn't go with something with a lot of added sugar, which is something you can do with rum. Um, you can add sugar to it after the fact. They didn't go with a really light kind of, uh, what do you call it? Like a really light Spanish style rum either. They went with something with some oomph, some of that bittersweet, dry rum. And it plays really, really well with those rye spices. Like you get that anise, you get that pepper, you get a little clove. But it's balanced out with the kind of bittersweet, chocolatey, tropical fruity stuff. Um, and I really like it. I really like it. Yeah. It's like eating, it's like eating, um, it's molasses cookies with caramel and black licorice. That may, I, I've got a feeling that a lot of people probably wouldn't like that. I like that description that may not sound good to them. I really dig it. So, yeah, Basil Hayden's, that's a win. That's a win in my book. Uh, Mark Goings On says, that's crossing a line. Yeah, it is. That's what I do. I'm a habitual line crosser. I just step over lines. If you, if I find a line, I just cross it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I think I missed something. I think Jeremy Sims was saying something about a McAllen doing a rum, a rum something. Uh, Bayou Drams is on the mellow corn. <laughs> it is, it is, yeah, B.I.B. Um, oh, Vito was telling me to stay on my own channel. I didn't even see that. Um, yeah, but, uh, Jeremy says in the sixties. Okay. That makes sense. Way, way back when, when Scotch was the wild west and the SWA hadn't taken all the create creativity out of the, uh, out of the, out of the gig. Oh, a touch of rum syrup. Okay. Neat. Yeah, I could see why all those Gaelic motherfuckers got mad, got mad about that. Was like, oh, you can't put syrup in your whiskey. That's not real whiskey. Uh, so, um, speaking of which, we just had a sorghum whiskey on, and I was doing some re research on that. Apparently, some people are very angry that people are using uh, sorghum, uh, uh, like the sorghum syrup from the stock rather than the grains to make their whiskey. Um, they say it's not, it's not true whiskey. I think that's a little ridiculous. Cause like, look, I mean, in America, we've already got spirit whiskey. That's 95% grain, not even grain, just neutral spirits. 
like if you want to make your if you're actually making your stuff out of an actual grain plant i don't care what part of your of the plant you're using to make your whiskey as long as it's a grain plant you're already better off than like old thompson and all these motherfuckers who are basically just making vodka so yeah i don't know that's a, that's a weird thing to be angry about to me but i guess there's always going to be purists who who wants their whiskey neat and tidy um Sir Tannen, yes, sorghum whiskey is amazing. It's really, really good. Um, it is, let's see if I have it here. Well, yeah, we had this on stream the other day. Queen Jenny sorghum whiskey. So this is 100% sorghum. What they're doing is they're actually making out the syrup from the stalk. The stalk is crushed and they extract the juice, much like they do with cane syrup. Um, and then that's what they're fermenting. So they don't even actually have uh, mash tons. All they need is a washback to um, to ferment the, the syrup, which, like, I understand that's kind of a shortcut, but it's so good. It's really, really tasty. It's like drinking root beer mixed with Teddy Grahams. It's like the taste of my childhood, and I love it. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bayou is saying he's only ever had the basic Basil Hay Haydens. It was the first whiskey he ever had that wasn't named Jack Kimmer Evan. <laughs> Aww. Um, yeah, no, I would agree that the basic Basil is a little overpriced, but I feel the same way about Belveni, honestly. Belveni was the first whiskey I had that wasn't called Old Thompson or Clan McGregor. Um, so that was, that was eye-opening for me. And even though now I realize that it's not as good as a lot of other things I've had, um, it is still something I, I have a, a warm spot. Um, Jeremy seems to saying, if you process the grain by, by making fucking cornflakes and then fermenting it, it's still a whiskey. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like, and who, how many people are making their shit out of, yeah. Uh, uh, they don't need, they don't even need to walk. They don't need to do, uh, mashing because they're making it out of, you know, grain flake instead of, instead of whole grain. Um, yeah. So I think, I think it, the difference is, the difference is immaterial in my opinion. Um, as, as long as you're not cutting your whiskey with neutral rum, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about, you know, the, the, how you're processing your grain. As long as if you're making it from grain, sweet, great, awesome. Yeah, certain it's very nice. It's really good. And it's one of the few really sweet whiskeys that I really enjoy. So there's a lot of sweet whiskeys that are cloyingly sweet that I don't care for. This one, this one really, really hits the spot. So uh, Vito says my childhood tasted like fur and bear traps because I'm a giant Viking. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm. All right. We are coming up on an hour and 50 minutes at this point. Yeesh. Okay. I will, I'll stay on to about 750. Then I'm going to call it a night. I think the, uh, I think the bourbon buddy, no, not bourbon buddies, bourbon junkies are on after me. So I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, go head to head with them. Um, yeah. Jason Busey says he cuts his whiskey with bitter tears and regret. <laughs> um, Sir Tannen was saying, oh, somebody was making moonshine out of horse feed. That's actually pretty impressive. That's pretty cool. I have a, I, I know somebody, his dad built a still in an old refrigerator. The freezer still worked. So the freezer was the condenser. Um, and then the boiler was at the bottom of the fridge. And so um, he'd basically take a bunch of potatoes, like boil a bunch of potatoes. That was his wart, um, ferment that. And then um, you, he, he, he heated it up in the bottom of the fridge. It ran up to the top and condensed out the side of the fridge, 
which is just fantastic. I mean, I don't know how it tastes, but it's incredibly clever. <sighs> Beto says moonshine with horse feet probably tastes like Floki. There's a good chance. I guess it depends on how high you distill it. Wow. That is the thing. There is there is still a surprising amount of moonshining going on. Um, I know quite a few people who do some sort of some sort of illicit alcohol related activity. It's not just for Kentucky anymore. Erica won't let me because she says if I ever go to prison, she'll she'll abandon me instantly. Um, especially especially federal prison. Um, Bayou says horse feed is the basis for white claw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that is one thing I've noticed at the store ever since winter hit. People are not buying as much white claw. That that is that is something. So. Uh, I don't remember which one this is. Oh, this is the Grangestone blend. I've just got piles of whiskey sitting around here. The old man didn't finish off any of his, so I've just got piles of whiskey. Piles of whiskey, the name of my autobiography. It's either piles of whiskey or shockingly pale, the Edward O'Mara story. Richie says he just poured the McKenna 10 for BIB day. Very good. I like McKenna 10. I really do. Hey, I know it's probably overhyped at this point, but it, it's pretty fantastic. And don't tell Erica, but that's just another bourbon that I like. Um, yeah, no, I would love to, I would love go, to go down to New Zealand. That's something I tell people. That's something I tell people all the time is New Zealand proves that you can have home distillation without it being dangerous. No one's blown themselves up in New Zealand. Um, so Bayou says, uh, for winter, you need something like a hardcore, like Mike's or 20 year old Zima from the fridge. My old man used to love Zima in the nineties. Oh, that's all he drank. He was like, a, he was like, like a Scandinavian teenager, the way he drank Zima. <laughs> oh. Jason, that's disgusting. I love it. I love it. Oh, going back to this Grange Stone after drinking that good stuff. Not pleasant. Not pleasant. So, okay. I'm going to call it a night. Um, we're going to see you guys next week. Um, I'm going to do a pull of chicken cock, as is tradition. Um... <laughs> because that's how we finish these things around here. Uh, make sure you like on your way out the door. Don't forget to do that, because it does help us out quite a bit. And consider checking out our Patreon. If uh, We're having our first Patreon-exclusive Spirit Snapshot coming out Monday. So, um, And then next week, uh, that'll be March 10th. We're doing pre-made cocktails. Me and Erica will be back on stream doing pre-made cocktails. That'll be that, that week's stream. Um, and then for St. Patrick's Day, I've got the day off. So I'm thinking I'm going to do the long St. Patrick's Day. It's going to be, I think I'm going to try to do from like noon to six. I'm just going to sit here and drink Irish whiskey. I don't even think anyone's going to be watching, at the, but I'm going to do it anyway. So uh, that'll be fun. Thank you all for tuning in. You guys, until next time, stay rotten. Come on, end the stream, end the stream. There we are. Come on now. Stream yard. <laughs>